Funding for Common Core State Standards and ELLs is provided by the American Federation of Teachers Innovation Fund. We're going to go over the same chunk of text, but we're going to look at it from a different perspective, a different point of view. We're going to go really to the meat of it, okay? Carrie Bowinger and her ninth grade English language learners answer. have been learning about apartheid in South Africa. In today's lesson, they'll be continuing okay. their study of then one of Nelson Mandela's period, most famous speeches. And a second close reading for craft and structure. Okay. Before starting so, today's close read of the text, activity, Ms. Bowinger does a quick review with the questions. students of the passage's key so vocabulary. Since they learned right the words now, in yesterday's open lesson, your, open each your student has a glossary for reference. I want you to independently read the second chunk of text again. I want you to pull out three words or phrases that you still do not understand. Since okay. learning this new academic vocabulary is so essential to her students' success, Ms. Bowinger makes sure the students have repeated exposure to it. It's important for them to constantly be reminded of vocabulary, constantly. I always try to get them to use as much vocabulary as possible in their writing. Um, I always have vocabulary placed all over the room. So all the unit vocabulary, and I'll still linger on some words, and I'll keep them, say, some of the vocab from Martin Luther King is still in that room, and some of the vocab from Gandhi is still in that room. Exposure, 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 so that they are just really 110% about these words. There are a few words that I'd really like to focus on, okay? So, let's see. Stephanie, you had one I really liked. What was your first word? Legislate. Legislate, right? Legislated. Legislate. One word from yesterday was legislation, okay? If this counts as the noun, okay? We look at vocabulary words and we try and look at every way that, that we can possibly pull out from them, right? So legislation is the noun. So legislate is the verb. So if I'm going to say legislated, what can I immediately say about this word? Let's look, let's try and break it up. Think back to prefixes and suffixes and things we add on to change the meanings of words. So, Tashana, did you have something? I was like, it used to be, in like, it wasn't, but now it is. Okay, so are you past thinking time. past? Yeah, past. Is. Okay, so legislate, verb, which is now, legislated, which was before. So let me read across the definition. To make laws. If legislation has to do with a law or a set of laws, that's the noun, legislate is to make, okay, make the laws. It's very so important for ESL students to be exposed to all different elements of a vocabulary word. So we have to get them speaking and listening and reading and writing in this academic language. Once the review is complete, it's time to begin today's close reading so we of the text. Are, we, our guiding question for the day, Mandela was forced to make a choice to overcome white supremacy. What was it? What does this choice tell us about his point of view, ideas on white supremacy in South Africa? Right now, we are focusing back on 6B, reading for craft and structure. In the second close read, you will be answering questions about craft and structure. Work with a partner to answer the supplementary questions. Finally, we will be, you will complete the response to the guiding question. I will reread this second chunk once more to you. Then you will work on these supplementary questions, the following questions on the second page in your groups, okay? I admit immediately that I felt that without violence there would be no way to open the African people to succeed in their struggle against the principle of white supremacy. Even though they've seen this passage before, the students follow along as Ms. Bowinger reads it to them again. By, by reading aloud, Ms. Bowinger is modeling fluent reading, in which, which includes demonstrating proper speed and intonation. Or to defy the government. We chose to defy the law. We first broke the law in a way which avoided any recourse to violence. When this form was legislated against, and then the government resorted to a show of force to crush opposition to its policies, only then did we decide to answer violence with violence. Something I really liked in the lesson was um, no, their pair work, and that's something I've always made a very big deal and a very um, big important part of my culture that I have within the classroom. Mm -hmm. So I'd put them down, like, if you want white or no, no. Put on this. 
I like the culture of collaboration that I have and that everybody's working as a team. And I think that's a crucial element, especially in an ESL classroom. I really make sure they look at each other as a peer and they can rely on each other and work together well. Ms. Bollinger also monitors the students as they work together, informally checking comprehension and offering assistance where she can. It's a one word we're still kind of unsure about, right? State. State. Like a colony or something? So do you think that a colony like New York State so read it in the context. Let's go back to the section of text. Where do we see that? First chunk, right? We had either to accept a permanent state of inferiority. To accept a permanent state. So do you think that's like location state? No. Right? Okay. So do you think that has to do with? No. No. So state, another word could be? Like a class or a, or a level of some sort. Mm -hmm. OK. Let's think about situation. The permanent situation of inferiority, right? Yeah. Okay. Does okay. that help you with that question? Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. Once the pair work is complete, okay. Ms. Bollinger reviews the answers to each Go question the with the one. whole class. What does the expression crush opposition mean in the following sentence? What does the connotation of this meaning suggest to you? Okay. Crush opposition. When you hear that, crush opposition. What kind of connotation comes up to mind? Jason, what comes up to mind when you hear crush, like just crush somebody? Like destroy. Like destroy. So what kind of connotation comes to mind? If he was really trying to make an effect. I say denied. Hmm? Denied. Denied? Like denied like a harsh way, mm -hmm. put down. Oh yeah, definitely denied in a harsh way. Dr. to Shauna. Like when they had to carry them the passes, mm -hmm. and when they forced them into this small part of Africa, and like all the rich people had all the good parts. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so they're crushing their opposition. They're forcing them into these situations, right? That they have to carry around these pass laws. So they're crushing their opposition. Do you remember the video yesterday and how affected everyone was? These pass, law, pass laws were a huge deal, right? It really controlled everything, everywhere that they went, everything that they did. They were completely controlled. So review, look up at the smart boards. If you have something different, make sure you're writing this answer down, okay? I came out of grad school not really knowing anything about the Common Core and all of a sudden I had this job. This is a huge shift and what does that mean for ESL students? So I did a lot of research on my own and a lot of um, professional development and now I understand what it does mean for ESL students and how I can get my students to really um, achieve these standards.